Hello, my friends. So in this video, I'm going to share with you all some common causes of uh, hypokalemia. Now, hypokalemia is one of the most common electrolyte imbalances that we see in the world. And it is important for us to have some common causes in our mind so that um, we are not just solely replacing the loss, but we also fix the underlying problem. So uh, when I see hypokalemia, normally I will branch it out into uh, four categories okay, to make things very simply simplified. Okay, so this list is not exhaustive, but it covers, I guess, uh, most of the causes of hypokalemia. All right. So the first thing that I would think is, is it because of GI loss? Okay. Is it because of GI losses? Huh? Please allow me to scribble on the board. All right. Is it because of GI losses? All right. So GI losses, <clears throat> you can think of uh, persistent vomiting or persistent diarrhea. Huh? That is one of... Uh, the causes that actually you can think of are persistent diarrhea, persistent uh, vomiting. Okay, of course, this can be primary or secondary. Primary means there's actually a disease process that's causing diarrhea and vomiting. Secondary means maybe it's because of certain medications that causes um, diarrhea or vomiting, or it's uh, because of lessatives, okay, or bowel preparations. So these are things that actually we can think about, all right, in terms of GI losses. Of course, um, if the patient is not having diarrhea or vomiting, then could it be renal losses? That means the potassium is actually being lost through the renal channel, okay? So here, I would like to sub-branch, okay, into four categories normally, okay? I will sub-branch into four categories. All right, number one, check the drug list, okay? I always think that we should check the drug list there are many drugs that can cause hypokalemia, but in the world, there are three common drugs, okay, that can cause hypokalemia that we should actually look into, okay, from the prescription list. So one, okay, this one is very important, okay, and commonly mislooked is the diuretics, okay? Always look at the diuretics. Uh, I'm referring to the tyrosides as well as the loop diuretics, okay? So the... Call, the most commonly one that we use in the medical world would be furosemide, okay? That we use to treat fluid overload, um, cardiac, as well as renal or liver patients, okay? So normally we use furosemide and it can actually cause a hypokalemia, all right? Of course, uh, diuretics such as the potassium sparing drugs, uh, as the name suggests, they don't cause hypokalemia, like for example, spironol, lactone, all right? So now the second drug that we can actually think about is the beta-2 agonist. Okay, beta-2 agonists that we use to treat what? Asthma or COPD, all right? So these kind of drugs, for example, like salputamol, all right? Our beta-2, okay, agonists, all right? They can also cause hypokalemia. And the third drug that I think is also quite commonly used is the steroids, okay? The steroids, all right? So I was when I was in medical ward, okay, there were quite a number of rheumatoid patients admitted to our ward, all right? They came with SLE flares, all right, which require high doses of prednisolones, okay? And it's not uncommon for us to see that they're actually having persistent hypokalemia, all right? So you replace, then it come with hypokalemia again. So most likely, okay, it's because of the high dose of the uh, steroids that we're giving to the patient, all right? That's the cause. So once you uh, taper the steroids down, you can see the potassium level going back not, uh, to normal again, all right? So, of course, there are other drugs that can cause hypokalemia, but these are the three main groups of drugs that I think is really commonly used in the, in the ward, okay? And we should actually look at them. Number two, all right? If you see that the patient is having hypokalemia and you see that the BP, okay, of the patient is actually high, all right, so you look at the BP. So if the BP is actually high at the same time, then you should actually look at um, some endocrine causes. All right, I'm talking about causes like, for example, Cushing syndrome, uh, Cushing, Cushing syndrome, okay? Or we talk about uh, Cone syndrome, all right? Okay, so uh, pheochromocytoma, all right? All this can also cause uh, hypokalemia, all right? That's why uh, some specialists or some uh, consultants, they will actually order uh, AM cortisol for this group of patients as well. All right, so number three, uh, this is actually very, very common. All right, it's very, very common. If you do not correct these electrolytes, the potassium will stay low, okay? This is what we call as hypomagnesemia. All right, hypomagnesemia. All right, 
Now, that's why it's always important for us to take the renal profile together with the electrolytes, the calcium, magnesium, as well as the phosphate, okay? So this magnesium, hypomagnesemia, can cause hypokalemia. Of course, uh, I'm not going into the pathophysiology behind, but this is one of the important causes that we should actually look at. Because a lot of times, patients come with uh, hypokalemia, and then we keep correcting it, and then we didn't see, actually, the patient has a background of hypomagnesemia as well. So you need to correct the magnesium, then the potassium will actually climb out, all right? So this is the third thing that you should actually think about. So number three, uh, this one, it's what we call as some rare causes, lah. Okay, this one, okay. Normally in the ward, I don't really think about it, all right. But in terms of uh, exam, like for example, MRCP Part One, it's their favorite question. Okay, the three diseases that can cause hypokalemia, all right, which are our what the butter, okay, butter syndrome, okay, the gentleman syndrome, all right, okay. So and also the Lidl syndrome. All right, so these are some rare causes, lah, okay, that are common in the part one exam, but not common in real life. Uh, at least in my very short, humble medical career, I have not seen yet. Lah, okay, hopefully in the future, I can see uh, such interesting cases. Okay, um, but in the future, if we have chance, I would actually share with you uh, how I actually differentiate these diseases because it's quite important for us to know the differences in terms of exam purpose once again. Um, not so in real life, okay? Of course, the third thing, all right? So, renal makes a huge branch, okay, from the causes of hypokalemia, all right? So, number three, you can also look at what, all right? You should also look at our uh, intracellular shift. All right, intracellular shift. That means, okay, the potassium ions are getting into the cells, all right? So once again, I'm not going into the pathophysiology behind this, okay? If we have time in the future, maybe we can talk a little bit about it, uh, but I think it's actually important for us to know, all right? So uh, in the future, we will actually have a look at the pathophysiology, but now we just keep the video short and simple, all right? So intracellular shift, I would say there are two uh, important causes that we should look at. One is alkalosis, alkalosis. Okay, now this is something that is very important, okay? And I would also like to share this with all of my friends here, okay? That you should always think of our hydrogen and our potassium as good friends, okay? Because they can actually affect each other and vice versa. What do I mean? Okay, for example, if you see high hydrogen ion in a serum, I'm talking about uh, what? Acidosis, right? Normally, potassium will be high. That means in the case of acidosis, normally you will see hyperkalemia, all right? On the other hand, if you see low potassium, like in this case, we're talking about hyperkalemia, you will actually notice that the, the H plus is actually low in the case of alkalosis, okay? This applies for every situation except, except for renal tubular acidosis. Renal tubular exodosis or RTA, okay? So this one, let me just rub this off, okay? And we uh, put it up here, okay? The renal okay, tubular exodosis, okay? I'm talking about type 1 and type 2, uh, okay? Type 1 and type 2, okay? So this is also one important renal cause, okay, for hypokalemia, all right? So again, normally when you see acidosis, all right, you will actually see hyperkalemia, all right? High H means high K, okay? Low H means low K, low K means low H, they are interrelated. Except in the case of type 1 and type 2 RTA or renal tubular acidosis, you will actually see uh, acidic, all right? You will get acidosis, but hypokalemia. Okay, so this one is also very important in terms of part one theory exam. Lah. Okay, so the difference between type one, type two, and type four, uh, the causes as well as the clinical manifestations, complications are very famous in exam also. So this one, if you have time, we'll talk about it in the future. All right, just one thing, uh, RTA type four, uh, it doesn't cause hypokalemia. Okay, RTA type four causes hyperkalemia. Okay, clear. So that's why alkalosis is one of the causes of hypokalemia, whatever things that can cause the alkalosis, huh? okay? 
Number two, you can also think about what? The insulin, all right? Insulin, all right? Insulin also drives, okay, the entrance of potassium into the cells, thus reducing the serum potassium. So that's why insulin is one of the components in lactic cocktail, right? That we use to treat hyperkalemia, all right? So after you think about this three, then you talk about the last one, okay, which is uh, nutritional deficiency. Nutritional uh, deficiency. So maybe in certain patients, okay, who are in ward for very long, in which um, they don't take sufficient potassium, okay, in their body, then maybe they can get hypokalemia as well, okay? So, or in some patients with eating disorders, uh, they can also get this nutritional deficiency. So in this case, of course, the best is that we can actually refer to the dietitian so that they can actually tailor a very good uh, meal that is rich in potassium for our patients, okay? So these are some common causes, all right, that we will encounter in the ward, all right? And of course, if we can treat the cause, then we do not have to solely just replacing the loss, okay? So um, in the next few videos, we will be talking about the approach to hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, hypernatremia. All right. So if you like this um, sharing series, then please do subscribe to my channel and share my video to your friends. All right. I hope that this helps. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.